while I'm here tearing down this carburetor, let's give you a quick little show of the tamper-proof plugs on the idle adjustment screws. Uh, you can see here, this, this is the first carburetor I've gotten recently that doesn't have these removed. Because a lot of times you should be adjusting these to make it run better. So what we got here, you can see this one's still plugged up. This one, I popped out the idle, or the uh, tamper-proof cover. All I did was uh, tapped a punch into it and just kind of got it in there and pulled it right out. Just got to be careful so you don't go in too far. This screw sunk down in there pretty good, but you only want to push this down as far as it needs to go to get out. You can see there. Just punched that right in there and it just kind of wedged itself out. Um, and then what you got is this little screw here. And this very fine tip is what meters your fuel going into the carburetor on idle. So these are the guys that you adjust so that you can idle pretty good. And then, so when this comes out, everything on this carburetor is very frozen. Like throttle plates are frozen. I've had to be very, very careful taking all the jets out. And then this would hardly move. I had to, first of all, you have to have a small screwdriver that you can reach down in there. And then I actually, where did it go? I put this wrench on my screwdriver to carefully turn it because I didn't want to slip off and uh, screw this up, then I can't get it out. So you turn that out counterclockwise, of course, and then down in there, it probably won't come out with the screw. This spring is sitting down there to keep the uh, tension on the idle adjustment screw. That's basically sitting over top of this. So I just turned it upside down and it dropped out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one out. And uh, I just wanted to give you a quick, if anybody ever mentions tamper-proof idle adjustment screws, that's where they are. And then that's gonna meter your gas coming up through. Oh, these are disgusting. There's a little hole right there, you see that? Yeah. Because uh, your throttle plates are gonna be closed because you're not using your throttle. So your gas has to come in I wonder if I can get them free. I'll probably just run them through the machine. Oh, I got it to move a little bit. Probably not good to force it though. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to give you a heads up on that and uh, all my disgusting parts on this 94 EX500. It's just been sitting for too long. Everything needs cleaned out. It's disgusting. So that's your main jet holder. These are all your little holes that need to be cleaned up and opened. Then here's your main jet. That is a 130. That needs cleaned up and opened up. And then I had those soaking with uh, the idle jets. And uh, that's all the gunk and crap that came off of them. So they're soaking in carb cleaner. Those will probably be pretty clean. But still going to have to make sure all the holes are open. So I'm keeping all my parts, my cord's stuck here, keeping all my parts carefully sorted and uh, going to put these in here and then hopefully get these carb bodies into an ultrasonic cleaner so that everything can be lovely and cleaned up. See, I'm even going to have to pull out the, the choke slides because they are very sticky too. So I'll pull off this slide, take these two screws out right here that they slide on. Careful, there's a nylon washer there that's supposed to let it move easily. So I don't want to lose that. And then this pulls on a slide. You can see right in here. That pulls on the slide. I'll show you that. And that is your choke. So that's letting extra gasoline in when you open it. Whoops. And there's the top of your carb body. That's all opened up. You can see right down through where the needle drops. And then here's your air hose. That's plastic. That needs to come off also. And then down here is your fuel line hose. Your fuel line sticks on there. And then there's this tube that 
feeds both carburetors. Here is your idle adjustment screw. That's to turn, that's, that's, you turn this so that you have your throttle plate sitting in the right spot. Okay, well that's it for now. And then obviously, well not obviously, but here and here are vacuum lines. One goes to your, let's see, which side are we on? This one goes to your fuel tank if uh, you have a vacuum operated fuel petcock. And this one goes to the air box. And you can just cap these off if you really need to, but yeah, that's your air box. So that is the tour of the 94 EX500 carburetors. Pretty similar on just about any carburetor for the EX500 Ninja. So there you go. Just wanted to show you that. Also show you the junk in the bottom of the float bowls. I don't even know what this black stuff is, but there's some rust in there. I believe it's from the tank. Also, this side was dry, but there's still rust in the bottom. So that's coming from the tank into the carburetor and you do not want that in your engine and that's just going to clog up your little jets on the carburetor. And also, here's your plunger for the uh, float bowl and your floats. This was all stuck, wouldn't move at all. So I had to carefully pull that out without wrecking anything. And uh, I could probably get new, all these parts new. They would probably clean up, but we'll see. Probably get a kit, do it the right way, replace it with all new parts. There you go. Just a quick note. I was showing you down here in these holes. Well, make sure you don't lose the little washers that are seated beyond the spring down there in both holes. Because if you don't know they're down there, they may not come out, but they might fall out at some point. So you want to make sure that these washers are safe somewhere. And they're not stuck down in there. If they don't come out, fine. But you might want to clean out that area anyway. But if they do come out, don't lose them. Because you're going to want to put those back in before you put the spring down there. And then before you put the idle adjustment screw back in.